Hello everyone. Hello. My name is Jennifer State. This is Steve, my partner and husband. And back here is little Rose. And we are again in our mobile art studio, so welcome. <laughs> um, I have in my hands the beautiful Faber Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils full set. <laughs> <laughs> so a few weeks ago we did the battle, the epic battle of the watercolor pencils. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out because I tested how many? Over 40? I can't remember that. <laughs> a ton of different kinds of watercolor pencils. And the number one, according to my tests, best watercolor pencils were these, the Albert Dura pencils. And I only had a small set. I'll show you what I have um, that I had before. And loved them so much that this guy right here, he felt like I absolutely needed the full set. <laughs> A part of the reason why we ended up getting the full set was because of the awesome Faber-Castell color system where all the colors work between the different lines of Faber-Castell products. So I'm going to show you that. I've got the polychromos here with me in our mobile art studio. So I'm going to kind of show you how the Faber-Castell color system works, what my plans are to do with these beautiful watercolor pencils, and I'm going to color with them, give you a little taste of how these work on our watercolor paper. We're going to have some fun coloring, but the first thing we're going to do is unbox these beauties. Yes. I'm so excited. I've had these for a couple weeks and I haven't let myself open them because I wanted to open them with all of you. <laughs> so before we get going though, I wanted to remind you that we have a giveaway going on. So if you are watching this during July of 2020, come on over to Coloring Bliss. There's a link uh, in this video description to follow. We are giving away the full set so you won't have to suffer from full set syndrome. Yes. The full set of Derwent Ink Tense Pencils plus a book where you can fill them all in. Um, it's a color scheme, tritone, color wheel, swatching awesomeness book <laughs> that <laughs> goes along right. with it. It's this book here, only instead of it saying Tombow dual brush pens, it will say Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. So it's this book, but brand specific for the pencils that you have a chance to win. Yes. So follow that link. The winner will be announced on August 1st, 2020. If you are watching this after that date, don't dismay. We are going to be having another giveaway. In fact, Steve and I planned it this morning. Yes. Secret. So <laughs> make sure that you come on over to Coloring Bliss, sign up as a free member so that we have your email and we'll shoot it off to you when we start our next giveaway. And don't worry because we, it's just me and Steve, yep. and we won't share your email with and, anybody and else. Rose. Oh yeah. And we, Mishka, he's right there on the desk. Yeah, we might share the email with Rose. Yeah, I don't think she'll tell anybody. No. <laughs> All right, so let's get to the good stuff. We're going to do the unboxing now. Okay. I'm really excited about this. Mm-hmm. Let's unbox this and I'll show you how many I had before. Um, and there's two different versions that you can purchase of the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer pencil. So I'll show you, I have um, a small set of the other version which are called the Magnus. So I'll show you that here in just a second as well in case you have shopped for these before and you've seen both versions. So this is the full 120 set here that um, we purchased. And I think we got this off of Dick Blick is where we found the best deal, right? Yeah, I think they had a sale going at the time. Yeah, and that's why we pulled the trigger on it, because there was such a good sale. So, yeah, let's break into this plastic here. Let's see. Oh, I think I'll grab a brush here and break into this plastic. Oh, I love new pencils. So exciting. So my plan will be to print off my copy of the, um, we have this, right, Steve, already um, the, available for everybody, only the Albert Durer yeah. version yep. of this book. So I'm going to print this off and eventually fill in this whole book with my Albert Durer pencils. This one's filled in with the Tombow pencils. I mean, Tombow dual brush pens. So that's my plan. I'll have it all swatched and everything with the entire set of 
Albrecht Durer pencils. So these are watercolor pencils. Really strong pigment, beautiful breakdown. When you hit them with water, they break down really nicely. And if you want to learn more about them and why I picked them as my number one pick, watch that battle of the watercolor pencils. Okay, here we go. Ready. Always a little worried the first time I open a tin that maybe they'll be broken after shipping or something. Oh, oh smell that smell. Oh, smells like Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys smell your pencils? I love the smell of pencils. All right, so in here we get our, this comes with most Faber-Castell products. You get a little leaflet, talks all about um, Faber-Castell, the brand, and it kind of gives you some hints on how to use the pencils, so that's really handy to get you started. If you have watercolor pencils or think about um, investing in watercolor pencils, we recently recorded a five-part workshop series on how to use watercolor pencils. It was so much fun. We even used the ink tense pencils a little bit in that series, and we learned a ton of really fun things, including backgrounds and how to use these pencils. So if that's interesting to you, come on over to learn about how to become a Bliss Partner, and you'll have access to those archived workshops immediately, and you can go through those workshops and learn all about how to use these types of tools. Now this is a new insert that I haven't seen before, and it's all about the Magnus pencils. So I'll show you the Magnus pencils here in a minute um, and talk about what the difference is between this line of pencils and the Albrecht Dürer Magnus pencils. So this is our full set. We've got one tip that broke. Um, during shipping, but that's okay. I'm not sad about that. And the tray has these little, um, is it elastic? Yeah, elastic handles. That's really nice. Helps you lift them out. Ooh, the trays are nice. They are that flimsy plastic that I don't like, but they're also lined with some sort of foam. Um, how can I show you that? Let's try the other view. Let's try this view. Um, I don't want to, don't want it to, okay, what if I go like, can you see it there? Oh, um, <laughs> problematic, problematic, how can I show you, okay, you just have to take my word for it. There's a foam on the underside of this, and I think it's to help nestle these more accurately below it, or more nestly, <laughs> nestle them more nestly. Oh, yeah, that's some good words. So there's the second tray. So this is the um, same color. Oh, look how beautiful they are. The same line of colors as what the polychromos come in. So there's some neat things we can do with the watercolor pencils side by side with the polychromos. Polychromos are an oil-based um, color pencil, and then these are the watercolor pencils. So they're kind of like brothers and sisters, and they'll be able to work side by side with each other. Look at the grays, all oh, they're beautiful, so pretty. And yeah, this tree has that foam on the bottom side too to help it uh, with packaging, I'm sure, because it's not helping with the rigidity very much. But I love having those handles on it. Um, some of the other tins I've gotten, like from Arteza and Castle Art, they don't include these little plat um, rubber bands here, and it's really hard to lift out the trays. I always bust my nails, or yeah, it's really difficult to get the trays out, so I appreciate that nice little touch, even though the plastic is still cheap. That's a nice touch. Okay, so that's the new set for me. My full set syndrome is satisfied. They smell beautiful. There's only one tip that got a little bit broken in transit, so oh, they're beautiful. So let me show you what I had before, um, which was a decent collection of these pencils. Um, and I'll show you what the Magnus pencils look like. So this is what I had before. And what I did was I was collecting the Albert Durer pencils open stock. Open stock means buying pencils like this one at a time at an art store. So I have a local um, Dick Blick store um, in Salt Lake City. It's in a little place called Sugar House. 
And what I would do is go in and I saw them there and I thought I want to try them, but they're a little bit pricey so I don't want to buy the full set right off. So I bought just a few, um, a light, medium, and dark of one of my favorite colors, purple, to take home and try and see if I liked. And I liked them so I started collecting more. And what we did was when I learned about how Faber-Castell had a color system, then I knew that I could go for the tritones um, that the polychromos had and I would have some good light mediums and darks. So here at Coloring Bliss, I like to set up my colors in light mediums and darks based on the artist color wheel. Let me grab my artist color wheel. This is the artist color wheel that we use to base our tritones off of. So we find in a big set like this, a red violet that matches as close as possible. So here's our red violet trio right here. So we go through, Steve and I do, and we spend hours swatching all of the pencils and then we find the one that matches this red violet as close as possible. And then we find a dark and a light that complements it as close as possible. And so we end up with a beautiful trio, just like this. And we do that for every color on the color wheel. Uh, Steve's fixing the blinds, go ahead. <laughs> we get wind coming in through the windows of our um, RV here and sometimes you'll hear howling and yeah, you're gonna hear all kinds of interesting things from our, <laughs> our ambient um, setting. <laughs> so that's what this is here. So slowly I collected all of these colors until I had all 36 of the colors for the light mediums and darks of every color on the color wheel. So that's how I started my collection of the Albrecht Durers and that's how I knew I loved these pencils. I love the way they work. I love the color payoff and then I did the big battle of the watercolor pencils and I tried to be as objective as possible during that big test because I wanted to know for sure were these the best? Were the ink tents better? The ink technically isn't the ink tents technically aren't watercolor pencils. I go into that more during the battle. But I wanted to see if the ink tents pencils would beat out these. I wanted to see if, um, what were some of the other, like the Caran d'Ache watercolor pencils, would they beat out the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils? I had so many questions and I wanted those answered before we invested in the full set of Albrecht drawers. And so once we've did that battle of the watercolor pencils and I knew that these were my favorite Favorite, and they won the battle that's when Steve was like you need these <laughs> and we still waited a little while until the cell came up and then we invested in the full set of these beautiful pencils so that's my journey to getting the full set of Albrecht Durers now they do come the same formula what's inside these pencils come in a different format and it's called the Magnus and oh boy these are amazing let me show you that's these guys right here and I've bought one tin of these they were part of the Battle of Watercolor Pencils um, they came in this tin which is a set of 12 they were all lined up in here. I took them out and put them into this case. By the way, this is a global art case in case you're interested. Love the global art cases. They're a little bit pricey, but they are high quality, last me a long time, and the little loops hold three pencils at a time so that you can um, organize your pencils the same way I'm doing, which is in the trio, so love that. So this is, I'll bring out, let's let's bring out the purple since we keep talking about red violet here. This is an Magnus pencil compared to, um, here's one right here, compared to just a standard pencil. So you can see right away, the Magnus pencils are a lot bigger. You get a lot more core, so you can do a lot more um, broader strokes. You can lay down way more pigment, way more color, faster. Um, so these are more expensive and they don't come in the full range of colors as the smaller pencils do. Wish that they did. I was a little concerned that they would feel odd in my hand working with them, that maybe my 
hand would get more fatigued quicker. Um, I was worried about sharpening them, a lot of those kinds of things. But once I bought this 12 set, I was really pleased with them. And like I said, now I wish they came in the full set because I think I may have invested in the full set of the Magnus instead of the full set of the little ones. But they don't come in the full line of colors, so I'll just keep these 12 and enjoy what colors I do have and be very, very content with my full set of Albert Durer's, the original size. <laughs> so eventually what I'll do is um, I'll take out all of these out of this case and they'll go into this case. That's the eventuality, what will happen. And they'll line up just like these. This is my full set of polychromos, the Faber-Castell polychromos. And they're set up um, very similar to how you just saw the Albrecht Durers. I've got all the tritones right here, light, mediums, and darks of every color on the color wheel. And then all the other colors of the polychromo sets follow right behind. So you can see all those grays that we just saw in the Albrecht Durer box, the silvers, golds, all of them are all right here ready for me to use. So when I'm picking colors, which you'll see me here do in just a minute, I usually go here first to my tritones, and then when I need additional colors to add depth or dimension or fill out a color scheme, I go into the rest of the colors. So that's how I use a set, a full set. So now you understand how I am going to be working with the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durers. We're gonna leave them here for now in this box. Oh, I just, I keep getting a whiff, that new pencil smell whiff. I love that smell. <laughs> I can't wait to play with these. So what I'm planning on doing next with all of you is do an actual coloring page. So let me show you the book I have here with me in my mobile art studio. Um, that's this book right here. This is Mandela Bliss Volume 3. Okay, Mandela Bliss Volume 3 is really special because when I drew it, I wanted to leave large open spaces in all the mandalas. So instead of filling all the spaces in with really intricate, fun details for you to color, I left the spaces open and wide on purpose so that if you wanted to draw in details, you could, or if you're like me, sometimes you want wide open spaces where you can kind of play. You can do really big blends and really push your tools and see how much um, contrast you can get, how you can go from really, really dark to really, really light. Sometimes on coloring books, I get frustrated because the leaves and the flowers are so teeny tiny, I don't have room to really play with the colors I've been given. So another reason we drew, I drew Mandela Bliss Volume 3 the way I did was because I know a lot of you have eyesight issues and the teeny tiny details can be really difficult to see. I know I have have certain days where um, my eyes do double vision. Steve knows I have that problem. And so the tiny details can make it really um, not blissful to color. <laughs> so this book, if that's some of the things that you struggle with, this book might be an answer for you. And the cool thing over at Coloring Bliss, the print shop, is that you can have it printed on different papers. You get to choose what paper you have it printed on. This book here is printed on our favorite watercolor paper. We took forever to find a really good watercolor paper for all of you. Um, a true watercolor paper, not a faux watercolor paper. So what makes it true is that it's has sizing. So sizing means it's a treated paper. It has a sort of like a coating on it that allows the water colors, any kind of water basically, to sort of float on the surface of the paper before it hits the fibers. So if you've ever tried to use any water-based product on a standard cardstock, you know what I mean. It soaks straight into the paper, you get streaks, and the fibers of those papers kind of pill up and cause weird um, 
fibers to come up and do strange things, right? It's not fun to color with, hard to blend. Um, so watercolor paper solves that. But a lot of watercolor paper is very thick and it's also very textured, which makes it difficult to work with delicate nibbed pens and it's almost impossible to run through a printer successfully. So when we found this paper, we were excited because it was economical. We could um, afford to do it for you. It runs through our printers um, and it prints out cleanly and it's true watercolor paper, it has sizing. Now it's a lot thinner than what you may be accustomed to with standard watercolor paper, but it works. It's still true watercolor paper. So it may not do everything a high quality, say arches, cotton, watercolor paper will do, but it will do what we as colorists would like it to do, which is beautiful blends. We can do amazing things with it. Let me show you this, some of these really fun things I've tried in this book. Look at these fun things. Some of these I've done live here on YouTube. Look at this cool background I was able to achieve. So um, if you've ever wanted to try watercolor, um, this might be a fun book. This Mandela Bliss Volume 3 printed on watercolor paper may be where you might want to try. This is one Steve tried with the um, Derwent. Is it Derwent? Is it the Graphitint? The Graphitint pencils. This is one that Steve tried. And look at that one. Oh, this one's got some shine. Let me show you. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's what I did with Mandela Bliss Volume 3. I made mandalas with big wide open spaces, including the backgrounds. The backgrounds are generally pretty open and, and almost blank. Some of them are totally blank like this one. Some of them have a few details to kind of guide you along. So that's what I was my vision here with this book. Okay, so let me show you the page I was thinking of working on with all of you today to teach you a little bit of how to use watercolor pencils. This one was the one that was speaking to me today. So like I said, it's a good one because again, we've got open spaces so we can push the pencils, we can let the watercolor flow, um, where if we had teeny tiny places, then the watercolor has nowhere to go. And we've got a nice big wide bold background. So my plan for you is I'm going to show you um, maybe a few elements in real time and then I'll speed it up and let you see me come to the very end. And at the end I'll kind of wrap it up and tell you what I learned along the way and how I'm feeling about my full set of Albert Durer pencils. So let's pick some colors. And the way I'm going to do that is with this tool right here, the Quick Color Picker. This one is um, not brand specific and it's a full color version. So um, if you have a whole bunch of different coloring tools in your stash and you need help picking colors, the quick color picker might be perfect for you. Um, it comes with some manipulatives that you can cut out and put on top of the color wheel and I teach you how to use it. We've got all kinds of videos to teach you how to use the manipulatives. And then the next section takes you into actual color schemes. So what we need to do is pick a color scheme. Um, I'm just gonna flip through and see what I'm feeling like. What, what color jumps out at me? Look at all these color schemes. Um, I think this is partly why it's hard to pick colors, especially on mandalas, because you, I mean, the sky's the limit. Any color you want will work here. So I'm feeling, oh. A red orange. I'm. I love tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are the ones with the two words. Um, those are tertiary colors. They're some of my favorite. And that red orange is speaking to me. So let's go to the red orange page and see. I usually go for the split complementary. Those are some of my favorite. Ooh, look at him. Uh, that one's speaking to me right away. We've got red, violet, red, orange, and green. Okay, I'm not gonna fight it. That That is what I'm liking. So now what we do is we come over here and we look at what colors I need. So um, we need red, orange. 
which is 109. So I'm gonna hit fast forward so you don't have to sit here and watch me um, hunt for the numbers on these new pencils. And I'm gonna find the nine pencils that are in the split complementary number two red-orange color scheme that I picked, okay? So we have our nine pencils. This will be the color scheme right here, the split complementary color scheme. And those are the nine main colors in case you want to color along. So I'm excited about that. They look pretty, very soft and pretty together like that. And then we have the rest of the Albrecht Durer pencils to pull from if we need them. Now I must say, I'm a little surprised. They feel a little bit more crumbly than my set, my original set of Albrecht Durer's. So we'll see if that continues. Um, that's interesting to me. Maybe it's just the initial use of them. We'll, we'll see. Um, the other thing I forgot that I really don't like about Fabric, uh, about Faber-Castell products is why do they put this annoying, metallic print on their pencils. It's so hard to read the words and numbers on these pencils. I sure wish they would find a better way to label them. They're a beautiful pencil, but man, it's hard to read those numbers sometimes. Oh well, I'm being picky. <laughs> They're expensive though. I'm allowed to be picky. <laughs> okay, let's get to coloring now and move my color scheme book to the side and I'll put these to the side. Oh, I keep getting whiffs of new pencil smell. I love it. Okay, here's the page we're going to work on and I'm gonna show you a little bit. Um, there's so many different ways to work with these tools. Um, like I said, we spent five workshops teaching how to use these tools, so there's no way that I can teach you everything right now. Um, so yeah, I'll just teach you a little bit here. And then if you want more, I highly recommend you come and check out the workshops that we did with the partners. So you can get more um, lessons. I've got two cups of water here um, and I've got them labeled so that I don't get them mixed up. One says clean and one says dirty. And then um, we can try some different techniques here. So I think uh, what I want to do is since the yellow, um, the red orange was sort of my color that I was drawn to, I want to make that my mother color or my dominant color. So let's start with that. And I think I'll put them here in this sort of motif right here in this design. So let's start there. And the most simple way to use them, the, the way that most people, when they pick up these pencils, that's the way they start is to, I call it dry on dry. It's a, uh, it's a term that you use with, um, watercolor. So we're going to use the pencils dry onto a dry paper. That's, you know, probably the most basic way that if you bought these you would start using them right away. So the great thing about watercolor pencils is that you can use them like a standard color pencil. Um, so you get a two-for-one with these tools, um, which is one of the criteria I used when we were um, rating them for the big watercolor pencil battle was how well do they look as a dry color pencil because some of them didn't perform as well as a dry color pencil but these ones do they perform beautifully okay so I'm gonna color as if they were just a standard color pencil here but I'm not going to be too finicky because we're going to hit it with water and it's all going to change here. The other thing you don't want to do at this point is push hard. This is not a burnishing pressure I'm doing. It's a pretty light to medium pressure. I don't want to change the texture of the paper at all. So we're just laying down pigment um, with an eye towards activating it with our water. Okay, so there's a simple blend that we've laid down. Remember we're on watercolor paper, so we have an advantage in our court here. Get a paper towel ready. Okay, and 
This is a round brush and it's a number eight. These are by Mimic and it's uh, the Creative Mark line. Or is it by Creative Mark and it's the Mimic line? I think that's how you say it. I have a set of these in our Amazon shop that you can go check out. Um, they were, uh, they're really good like starting out watercolor brush set. You get a variety of different watercolor brushes in one set. So if you've been looking for a watercolor brush to try, this these are good. And the number eight round tends to be one of my most go-to brushes because you get a really nice point on it. So you can do line work, but you can also do broad strokes like on a background as well. So it's a good all around little brush. Okay, so I'm going to get it wet, but I'm going to um, mop off a large amount of that water so my bristles are just damp. And I'm going to start in the lightest area and work to the dark for the activating. Now again, one of the reasons the Albrecht Durer's scored so high is because it doesn't take a lot of water and a lot of agitation to get the... Um, binders to let go and get that pigment to start turning into watercolors. Some of those pencils I tested you had to use a lot of water and you had to really agitate to get those binders to relax and that was a mess. It was so frustrating. It took all the joy out of it. Okay now I'm working my way down Let's go to this view. I'm working my way down towards the darker color, kind of controlling that darker pigment from pushing its way up into the lighter tones. So it won't overwhelm it. A little bit more water. You need just enough water on your brush to activate and release from the binders of that pencil. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let me go like that. Now what we're gonna do is let that dry and we can come back and go again on top of it for a second layer or we can just leave it like that. Or we could come back with the polychromos and deepen up the tones. There's so many options, so many options. That's why there's five workshops over with the partners on how to work with these pencils. But I'm really happy with the dimension. The only thing I'm not super happy about is the dark. The light is nice and bright and happy, but I wish the dark was darker. So we're going to address that when I get around all these motifs. So I'm going to hit fast forward and repeat what I just did here in this motif, in all of these motifs, and then we'll address that dark. And I'll show you what I'm going to do to up that contrast so we have a good light to dark contrast. Okay, so I've got all the dry on dry pigment um, laid down now, and I'm gonna do the same thing I showed you here and activate from light to dark. So while I'm doing that, I asked Steve if he would share some more photos from our travels. We're traveling in our RV, so I'm gonna have him go ahead and put some of those new photos up. He's been taking some photos of the lake we are parked by and the pretty flowers. There's so many beautiful things he's been taking so many pretty pictures of. It's so much fun. And he's actually started an Instagram account. If you're interested, he'll put the Instagram, um, is it a handle or? I don't know what it's called. The information you need to follow him on Instagram will come up on the screen now. And you can follow him if you're interested in seeing some of the photos from our journeys. And he'll also um, be posting some of the drone footage he's been getting and the neat things we're seeing along our travels. So go ahead and follow us there if you'd like and you can see our adventures. It's so much fun to see the photos he's getting and 
hopefully he'll be turning some of these photos that you're seeing on the screen into some grayscale coloring pages for us. I'm hoping that's his plan. Is that your plan, Steve? Yep. So you can watch for more grayscale coloring pages. Steve likes to take his photos and then he puts some artistic flair into them. Um, to make them even more unique and special. He doesn't just turn them into gray versions. He does special things to them and then creates coloring pages for you. So you can expect some of these images that you're seeing right now to be turned into grayscale images, hopefully, or maybe some other ones. He'll decide. He's the <laughs> grayscale photographer coloring guy, so he'll figure that out for us. So. Thanks for sharing those photos with us, Steve. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, we have them all activated now. Aren't they looking pretty? Now, we've got a couple of these that are needing some sharpening. So let me show you how to sharpen these pencils. All I do is I use a good handheld sharpener. Now, the core of a watercolor pencil tends to be a little bit more brittle. That crumbling issue I talked about when I was swatching these, I haven't had the same problem from when I first swatched them. So hopefully it was just a fluke from when you first um, swatch. I don't know. We'll see how it carries on here. So the way you, I sharpen them is to use a really good hand sharpener. This one is by Kuhn and the Kuhn uses a good really sharp German blade. That's why I like them. I also like the Alvin Brass Bullet is a really good hand one. This one happens to be in this adorable little glass jar. I think I have a link to this also in our Amazon shop if you're interested. Now uh, the difference with sharpening these are two things. One, the core is extra brittle so you need to be extra careful in what I'm about to teach you and two, you can save the shavings, the colored shavings. They can be reactivated with a little bit of water and you can paint with them. So if you want to have a specific jar or um, a plate where you collect the shavings and then activate them and paint with them, that's an idea you can do if you'd like. They make great backgrounds. Yeah, there's lots you can do with those shavings. So here we go. The way you do this is you put your pencil in, you hold your pencil steady, and you move the sharpener around the pencil. That's the trick. You don't want to move your pencil. You hold that pencil still. Okay? And that will prevent, or at least help prevent, as much breakage as possible. And then you just keep an eye on it and you don't want to over sharpen it. Obviously we're trying to preserve as much of that core as possible. And that's the best way I have found to sharpen these pencils. Just like that. So technically all that dust that is falling down into this jar is pigment that I could hit with water and it would turn into paintable paint. It's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm just going to sharpen up these two. And then we're going to talk about how we're going to get a little bit more contrast. So I have two options. I can reach for my polychromos, or I can stick with my Albrecht drawers. I think I'm gonna reach for my polychromos, because I can. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same color this number 188 in the dark, the darkest tone of my three in this color, in this red orange color scheme. So I'm going to reach for my set of polychromos right here, which I already, like I showed you, have organized in the tritones. So I know right here should be that same pencil. Let's see. Yep, 188. Okay, now if I take that pencil now and come in and I can do a bit of a burnishing pressure now right on top and deepen it up. Now I could do the same thing with the Albrecht Durer if I wanted to. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. I could also reach for a darker color of the in the red orange family if I wanted to go even darker to get a nice, even deeper contrast. That's kind of artistic 
choice at this point. But I'm liking this. I think this is adding enough depth in my color value here that I wanted. So I really like that. So that's a basic how to start with coloring with your watercolor pencils. Um, what I think I'll do next is I'm just going to hit fast forward and let you sit back and watch me color up the rest of this mandala. And when we come back, I'll share with you anything interesting that I discover along the way. Sometimes, like last time when I was coloring that pink flamingo, um, I came across a really interesting discovery with the white Posca pen. So sometimes when I color these I come across some fun things or I come across some things that are difficult that I didn't expect. So stay tuned to the end of the sped up version for any insights that I have as I work on this mandala. Okay, so you just got to witness all those beautiful colors from the Albrecht Durers go down onto the paper. I'm really happy with how the color scheme is turning out. But now I need some bling, Steve. Yes, so, get the bling. And we've got Mishka meowing in the in the room here too, so yeah. I took him outside where we're at and oh my goodness, he loved it. Did you take some video? Yeah, I'll okay. have to put some in. He, uh, he thought he could hunt some birds. He's never been an outside cat. He's always been no. indoors, so he's really not very good at it. But uh, he took off running, and he tried. <laughs> Fortunately, so he didn't get any, and I wouldn't have let him kill any. No, but, but it was fun to try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was still exciting, and he, yeah, he's funny. So I'm going to ask Steve's advice on which bling. I have a favorite. I'm curious to see what Steve picks as our favorite. So let's put the camera down and you guys can um, help me choose as well and see what you pick. So here's the color scheme, how it's turning out so That's far. It's really pretty. It turned out really I love good. How, yeah, like fruity or something. Yeah, is. very happy, very bright. Yeah. The red orange is our mother color and as you can see it it did really good. One of the things I love about the Albrecht Dürer pencils is the the range of contrast we can get out of them because they're true watercolor pencils you can let the white of the paper really glow up through so we could get really really lights all the way to really really dark in that the three color pencils you can get a huge spectrum of color really fun to play with Mishka's still talking <laughs> we're gonna let him go into the other part of the RV here and go hang out with Carter, our teenage sons in the other room, having a little snack. <laughs> okay, so this this um, color scheme worked really pretty, and I was able to, you know, balance. This is all three colors here with a tiny touch of the yellow orange on the tip of the green, and here I just used two of the pencils. So even three pencils you can balance and control and get some dark areas and light areas. It's really fun what you can do with just nine pencils. You can get all these colors. But we have these areas now that when I drew I kind of was thinking now these are areas they could add bling to when I was drawing it. So we've got this area here this area here and here, and then between the rays, I was thinking of doing some stippling with the gel pens to add bling out here as well. 
So these are the contenders. I'm kind of leaning towards one of these over here and then I also swatched a few colors that are also in the color scheme just to see how I felt. Um, but I'm going to eliminate everything on this side simply because I think they will compete with the color scheme. And what I'm looking for is the bling should accent and kind of just add a little umph, but not compete with the colors that I've laid down already. So let me show you. These are all Jelly Roll Stardust, this line right here. Let me see if I can... Look how pretty they are. Okay, so those I'm eliminating, but aren't they pretty? Any of them would have looked really pretty as well. What I'm leaning towards is something in the gold world. So we've got a Uniball pen here, is that one there. That's one of my new favorite metallic um, pens that I'm using. And then 551 and 554 are both metallics. So metallics tend to be more opaque. Got to keep that in mind. And then the 700 ones, those are stardust pens. So those are glitters. They're going to be a little bit more translucent. And then the 605 is that um, silver shadow pen. Oh, yeah. So it's going to have a gold shadow to it. I don't know if you can tell if I move it in the light. Can you see the silver? But it also has some orange in it. So vote. Comment below if you're watching this during the premiere. Um, comment which one of this, this little stack right here would you use for the accents? I already have a favorite. Some of them are pretty similar to each other. So we've got quite a wind I'm coming shut up. This right here, sorry everybody. <laughs> My hair is blowing. The papers are blowing, and I'm, I'm glad I put the awning in because I'm looking out the window and people are running around putting awnings in, up <laughs> out there. So I'm gonna hold this really still. And now, Steve, if you'll take a look at them, which one would you recommend? Uh, like I said, I don't want to compete. I want to add. I want to add to this the mother color which is red orange I don't want to compete like we've got these pops of our accent colors which are the green and the red violet so that's why I kind of eliminated those colors everybody's typing in hopefully right now what color they would pick and we'll see if My, you guys I, are on the same track oh you know what I would go for what I would do 605 Oh, you went for the silvery. Well, yeah. Initially, I was going to say the gold, but I like that 605. I don't know if you can hold it up for them to see close. The problem it loses is it's the light. light, yeah. But anyway, it has this undertone of orange. Here, what if we try this light here? Maybe they can... So like that's that silver shadow. That is what it is. I'll show you the pen. That's this pen right here. Oh, and okay. what it does is it, when you first draw it down, it will look quite orange, but then as it dries, this silver hue um, kind of floats to the top of the ink. So it's called a silver shadow pen and it's orange silver shadow. It's number 605 in the Jelly Roll Sakura line. So that's what that one is. So you wanna know which one I was leaning towards? I was leaning towards number 551. Yeah, that's kind of what I was too. The, the reason is the Uniball is sort of a greeny gold. And where my mother color is um, red orange, I was hoping to find more of an orangey gold. So that's why I was yeah. leaning towards 551. And that was the first one that my eye went to, but then I saw that 605. I think yeah. that could be cool. A silvery. Yeah. Could you I, get both? Well, I think, I think I'm going to shoot you down, and I'll tell you why. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> I'll just demonstrate it right here on this swatch. The problem when you color with the silver shadows is that when you do a larger area like that when you first color it down it's like ooh orange and then all of a sudden the silver just overpowers and you get almost I don't know it goes weird <laughs> so to get a consistent coloring of it's weird now the stipples can be fun and lines can be fun so like if you make notes with it it can be really fun so let me let that dry 
and then I'll show you it from this angle. I think that angle might be the best place for you to see. Can you see how that just goes totally silver? But stipples, you still get a bit of that orange. It's, it's a tricky pen, and so I don't know if it would do what we want it to in these areas. If the orange would come up through If it much. would come up enough. I don't know. I kind of like the idea that it was a hint of it, but yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go for 551. So I'm curious to see now, hopefully while we're watching the premiere, in case you didn't know, what we're trying to do with some of these pre-recorded videos every Wednesday, we're going to be doing a premiere. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now and you're not subscribed or you haven't hit that bell icon, click that bell icon and make sure you are, have the notifications on so that when we do have a premiere event, you can then, when the premiere event comes up, you can set your notifications so that you can attend the premiere and then you can ask questions to me while the video is running and I can answer it live during the pre-recorded video. It's really fun to attend. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to just stick with the one I picked originally and we'll go do 551. Okay, so that is this pen, I believe. Nope, this one right here, 551. So if you are um, a fan of gel pens, <laughs> um, that's another series we have. And I think that was also a five part series where we talk about not just how to color with the gel pens, but all the different, um, what's the word? Uh, the, the techniques, the... Um, all the different properties, that's the word, the properties of the pens. Like I mentioned, this is a metallic pen, and that means different things. Um, it'll perform different ways. So when you reach for a pen, like um, if you want a pen to do a certain thing, a metallic pen is going to perform one way, where a glitter pen will perform a different way. So it's kind of important to know the properties of all these gel pens, how they interact with each other, when to reach for one type of pen over another pen. So if you've been wanting to get better at your gel pens or start coloring with gel pens, then I recommend you check out the Bliss Partner gel pen series. Another reason to become a Bliss Partner. Um, like I said, the when you become a Bliss Partner, the cool thing is um, it's all pre-recorded, those workshops. So they're there waiting for you and you can watch them at your leisure. And then what we do is there's um, like current workshops going on um, for the month that you join. So you get to be part of those workshops. Hey, okay, I'm going to hit fast forward, fill in the bling, and we'll come back for the fun stippling part. Okay, so enjoy watching the bling fill in on this page. Okay, we've got the bling on the main areas. Let me show you how pretty. Look at how the light can, oh yeah, look at that. So pretty. Okay, and now we're going to add some stippling bling for fun. Are you ready? So I'm going to concentrate the majority of the stippling dots. Oh. Hold it like that. There, now the page won't bounce. The majority of the stippling dots down here and then let them disperse out like that. That wind, once again, sounding spooky. <laughs> yeah, I think the wind must pick up every afternoon here. That's the kind of the feeling I'm getting. Can they see that? Let me there all oh, pretty I love it okay so um, this is pointillism or stippling um, such a fun technique easy it's really easy especially if you have a really juicy pen so this pen here is the metallic pens which have a I think it's a one 
0.0 millimeter bold tip. So every time you touch down, you're getting quite a glob of ink. So the only trick here is don't put your hand into the wet ink <laughs> and try not to like smear. I think that's going to be my, my biggest don't smear. But look how pretty that's going to be. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. Okay, let's cue the montage as the dots appear. Enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, I've got two more sections here, and then I'll show you how awesome this looks in the light. I can tell the stippling isn't showing up on the camera really great, so I'll move it in the light here in just a second. But as I finish up, I just wanted to remind all of you to get your entries in for our giveaway, giving away that complete set of Derwent Ink Tense pencils and it's book to go along with it so it can help you pick your color schemes and swatch and organize those beautiful pencils so good luck to everybody as you enter for that remember that that giveaway um, ends at the end of july 2020 and the winner will be announced on august 1st 2020 so if you're watching this after that don't worry we're going to be having some more giveaways Steve and I are planning more, so get over to Coloring Bliss and sign up as a free member so that you'll be on our mail list. And make sure you subscribe to this video, um, our channel I mean, and hit a like on this video so I know you enjoyed this. And uh, hopefully you can start attending our video premieres that we're starting to do so that you can be part of the question and answers that we're doing live during the premieres. That's so much fun to be a part of that. I love answering everybody's questions while we all enjoy watching the art happen, the pre-recorded videos. That's been so much fun. Okay, here it is. What do you think? Let me get my face off of it so you can see just the art itself, all the stippling. I'll move it in the light there. You can see it catch the light. Oh, there, that's a good shot there. You can see the stippling really adds a really interesting dimension to it. Oh, it's so pretty. The center kind of looks like a, a gem to me. I really like that. Let me bring it up nice and close. Oh, so pretty. Look at all of that. The stippling is so neat. Yeah, that's fun. I love it. So we got to put a signature on it. I'm going to use that same pen. I always sign my pages and at least put the date on it. So I'm going to put my name and get a date on here so I remember when I did this fun page. July 2020. There, then I'll always remember when I did this page with my full set of Albrecht Durer pencils by Faber-Castell. I am so happy. <laughs> Thanks for helping me get my full set, Steve. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for joining us, you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.